Hello everybody and welcome back. So in this video I'm going to be sharing with you my tips, tricks and advice to getting better at solving problems. Now in my opinion problem solving is one of the most important skills that you can have especially as a programmer. The ability to look at a complex topic, um, question, problem, whatever it may be and break that down into smaller components that you then solve is something that's really important and in fact a lot of people know this. Look at the big tech companies like Amazon, Facebook, Google. The number one thing that they evaluate you on when they bring you in for a technical coding interview is your ability to problem solve. I can speak firsthand that during my coding interviews there was some situations where I didn't even have to write much code because by the time I had got done solving the problem on the board, talking about my solution and kind of walking through how I was about to code it, the interview was already satisfied that you know I had come up with the solution, they had seen me code previously and they were like hey you know what don't worry about it you can skip this section you don't even need to code that out. So as much as it is very important to know your tools and know the language that's what they really are. A programming language in my mind is a tool and you need to be good at problem solving to be able to use that tool effectively to solve problems, right? And that's what, in my opinion, makes a good programmer, someone who knows their language, knows their tools well, and can apply them into a problem that they've never seen before. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is pop up a question on the screen and I'm gonna show you my thought process and strategy to break this down. This is hopefully gonna show you how you can approach problems you've never seen before and immediately make them a lot easier for yourself. All right, so with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the question and talk about how you can get better at solving problems. All right, so we'll get to the question in just a second, but I wanna show you the platform that I'm taking this question from and what my personal recommendation is for people that are looking to get better at coding interviews or problem solving in general. So the platform I'm on right now is called Algo Expert. There's a link to it in the description as well as a discount code if you wanna purchase this. This is a premium paid platform, but there's a reason for that. This is really high quality and it is a great platform. This is really what I used to prepare for my coding interviews and it made a world of a difference. So essentially this is Algo Expert. It has a hundred coding questions on it. They're all ranked by difficulty and category. Um, so you can see whatever ones you want here. But the thing that really makes this stand out is not the questions. You can pretty much find these anywhere. It's the interface that you get to use. So it's just way easier to actually write and test code because you have the question on the side here, you have a bunch of hints if you get stuck, you have their solutions if you need to look at them. These are way better than leak code solutions in my opinion. You have a full video explanation. You can look at a bunch of different test cases and tests and all of this stuff to see what's happening. And it just, it's a really encompassing interface that makes it way easier to actually get down and start practicing questions. So anyways, if you wanna purchase this platform, I do have the discount code. I believe it's Tech with Tim that should give you 15% off. Link is in the description. Anyways, the question we're doing is river sizes. So I'll read the question out and actually we'll zoom in quite a bit here. And then I'm going to go to my, uh, what is it? Whiteboard on my computer and actually start solving this for you. So it says you're given a two dimensional array, a matrix of potentially unequal height and width containing only zeros and ones. Each zero represents land at, and each one represents a part of a river. A river consists of any number of ones that are either horizontally or vertically adjacent, but not diagonally. The number of adjacent ones forming a river determines its size. Write a function that returns an array of the sizes of all rivers represented in the input matrix. The sizes do not need to be in any particular order. So this is the example, and essentially what it's asking us to do is find all of the connecting ones, or the number of rivers, inside of this matrix. So that is somewhat of a difficult problem, and I'm going to show you how we break this down on the whiteboard before we even start coding and go ab about actually solving this problem. So let's head over to the whiteboard and we'll get into the solution. So the first step whenever you're looking at a problem like this is to make sure you actually understand what the problem's asking. So you want to understand what the input is, what the output is, and what you're actually being asked to do. You don't want to go wrong right at the beginning because you make an assumption or you do something that's not actually a part of the problem. A lot of times people will read through a problem quickly and it'll sound like a problem that they've done before. So they'll just start coding it based off memory, but then they realize halfway through that, Hey, that's actually not what they were being asked. And now they've made a huge mistake and they've wasted so much time. So you really want to make sure that you have a thorough understanding of what's being asked before you move forward. So what I like to do is just state a few observations and kind of redefine the problem in my own words before I move forward. So what I believe is being asked is to find the length of all of the rivers that are present in an array or in this matrix. So that's the problem. We want to find the lengths of all of the rivers that are present. 
So that would mean to me, if there was four rivers, then I would have four lengths that I would be returning in some kind of array. So the input is a matrix. I'm returning the length of the rivers. Okay, great. So we've defined the problem. I think we have an understanding of what it is we need to do. This is a simpler problem, but you know, you get the idea. That's a really important first step. Okay, so we want to return the length of all of the rivers. So how do we determine the length of a river? And in fact, what is a river? Let's make sure we understand that before we move any for, uh, any further. We want to really make sure that every single thing there we can define in our own terms and that it makes complete sense. So let's have a look at this question again and let's look at what it says a river is because we need to know what a river is to be able to do this. A river consists of any number of ones that are either horizontally or vertically adjacent. Okay, good. So that means that this would be a river. So I can't highlight it, but this one here, this one here. Um, so there's all these rivers in here that seem just to be vertical here, but I guess they could be horizontal as well. So that's something we're going to want to make sure we understand. What is a river? Is the one up here? I don't know if you can see my mouse connected diagonally to those ones. I want to make sure we get that. So let me now go ahead and draw a few examples and see if these will be rivers. See if I could determine myself if this would be a river. So I'm going to do a little example. I'll actually do it on this, this side of the screen here. I won't do too many numbers, but let's just do zero, zero, zero. We'll just do like a three by here. One, 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 zero, one, zero, zero, zero. Okay. So this is my example. Uh, and this kind of moves us into step two. So I understand the question. I'm kind of trying to figure out what a river is now. So my initial instinct is to start drawing. Because in my opinion, you know, I need to explain to my interviewer or to myself or to anyone for that matter, what it is I'm doing. And I can do that better when I'm drawing something out on the board. I can make some illustrations, you know, even if they're rough, which all of my stuff is uh, still helps quite a bit. So the question I want to ask myself now is, well, what is a river here? Is this two rivers or is this one river? Do we include these two bottom ones in the river? So that's a good question. So that might involve me having to ask the interviewer to go back and read again. Now I know that this whole thing would be considered a river because it says that they're horizontally or vertically adjacent, then that's a river. And since all of these are connected together, that's one river. I guess it's just too wide at this point, right? Because we didn't have any diagonals up here because if I added the diagonal, you know, we wouldn't do that. But oh wait, that would even still be a river because I could connect all of them vertically and horizontally adjacent. So that's what I start doing. I start playing around with a few examples, seeing if there's any examples that I can think of off the top of my head that maybe I'm not clear on right away and make sure I clear that up so that when I start doing this algorithm, I really understand that. And sometimes you won't see these kind of edge cases until you start going through the algorithm, but it's important to try to think about them and say, okay, what could mess me up here? I understand what a river is. Okay, good. I understand the problem. Let's draw it out. Let's make ourselves an example that we haven't seen and see if our understanding holds on that new example. That's a really important thing. Make your own examples because the example they give you can sometimes be a little bit of a trick and they almost want you to draw it out yourself. Great. So we have the example up here. Uh, we kind of understand what a river is now. And I'm going to say it's now the time that I'm going to start thinking about how I'm actually going to solve this. So we know that rivers are represented by ones. We know zeros aren't here. So the first thing that I'm probably going to have to do if I'm solving this problem is, um, well, this couldn't be, this might not be the first thing, but look through all of the elements in this matrix, right? So this is a 2D matrix, right? So these are technically arrays like this or lists or whatever you want to call them. So my first step is going to be to start looking through all of these different elements. So I'm going to say one, look through oops elements now excuse my handwriting it's quite messy with this drawing tablet but hopefully this at least gives you an idea so look through elements so what i mean by that is go one by one and start you know searching through all these elements looking for something specific so in fact what am i looking for well i want to find the length of all of the rivers so i need to find the start of a river and then see how long that river goes for right so the first thing I'm actually going to be looking for, I guess we could say, uh, maybe not a sub point, maybe I'll just put part two, check if element is one. If the element is one, that means that I've hit the start, the middle, some point of a river. And well, I should probably do something with that, right? If I hit the start of a river. So that's my thought process. You guys might have a different idea, but I'm thinking that I want to look for ones because that's the start of a river and something that I care about. Okay, so I want to check if the element is a one. What do I do if the element's a one? What should I do if it's a one? 
Well, I'm thinking if I find a one, what I should do is find all of the ones that would be in that river. So find the river that contains that one, because in that case, then I can determine the length of that river. I can add that river into something. I can do something with it. So I'm thinking that when I hit a one, what I should do is um, start looking for all of the other ones that are in that river. So I'll say three start looking for rest of river. Okay, so rest of river like that. Okay, so that's point three. So I'm saying that once I hit a one now, what I want to do ideally is find all these other ones. So find the river that contains this one. That's what I'm looking for. Nice. All right, so that's step three. What do I do after that? Well, once I find all of these ones, what I probably want to do is store or determine the length of this river. So I'm going to say determine length of river. Great. So now I've found a one, I found the river that contains it, and I found the length of that river. Good. We're moving towards what seems to be a solution here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to store the length of that river. I need to put it somewhere. I need to print it out, right? So I'll say store five store length of river. Great. Okay. So after we store the length of the river, what should we do next? Well, we could just go back up to step one and repeat the process. So let's actually see if this works. And this is what I'll do in interviews. You know, I don't know if I'm at the solution yet. I just keep practicing and I keep going through and seeing if anything messes up. So, okay. So currently we have looked through all the elements. So let's look through them, blah, 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 blah. Look through all the elements, go through all of them. Okay. Let's follow next step. So look through them, find a one. I found a one nice check of element is one. Yes. It's a one start looking for the rest of the river. Okay, great. So let's look for the rest of the river. And let's find this. So determine the length of the river. That could be like the finishing step. Like we found all the ones. Now we sum them up and we determine that this is length five. Store the length of the river. Okay. So I probably need an array or something to do that. So I'm going to store length of a river like that. Five. Boom. Great. Okay. We got that in there. Now, what do I do next? Well, let's go back up to the top. Let's look through all the elements. I was at this element right when I stopped. So now we go here. Hmm. Okay. So I'm already starting to see that there might be an issue here. I started looking for the rest of the river now because this element's a one determine the length of the river, store the length of the river. Well, if I did that, then I would get another five because I would find this one here, this, 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 I would find all those ones, but I've already used them. Okay. So this is a little bit of a breakthrough for me. This is telling me that once I find all of these elements in the river, what I probably need to do is store those somewhere or save those or say, Hey, we've already used this river. So what I'm going to say is store the length of the river and six store um, positions. Maybe I'll store the positions of the ones that I've used. So store positions of ones used. So the ones that have already been a part of some of those rivers. Great. So now at step two, I'll check if element is one and we'll say not used. So I know this is really messy. I'm just trying to fit it in here, but I'm just trying to say, and we haven't used that one. So now I've kind of came up with an algorithm that I think might make sense. Let's look through all the elements, check if the element is one and we haven't used it yet. Then we'll start looking for the rest of the river. If that's true, if that's true, we'll determine the length of the river. We'll store the length of the river and we'll store the positions of the ones that we used. And then finally, at the end, we can just return all the lengths of the rivers because we would have found them all when we reached that last element. So there you go. I've kind of successfully came up with an algorithm and a series of steps that I want to follow here. So now all I need to do is think about the tools that I know in my programming language to accomplish this. So look through all the elements. Hey, that's going to be a double for loop because it's a two dimensional matrix. Great. We know it's not uh, necessarily square. That's something to keep in mind when we do that. Okay. Check if the element is one and it's not used. Well, we're going to see if the element is equal to one, and then we're going to check in some set or some hash table, whatever it is you may uh, decide to use, if the current position that we're on was used in, an, in another river, because we'll store that in a set or a hash table. Great. Uh, part three, start looking for the rest of the river. How am I going to look for the rest of the river starting at a position? Well, I'm probably going to do that in a breadth first way or a depth first way. That's a tool that I know in programming. That's a fairly easy algorithm to implement a depth first search to look for all the other ones that are potentially in this river. Great. How am I going to determine the length of the river? Well, every time I find a new one, let's add one to a variable and we'll just keep track of how long the river is that we found storing the length of the river. Okay. So once I've guessed, I found all of the elements that were in the river, I need to store that length, which would have been in a variable. And then I need to store the positions of all the ones that were used. 
So maybe while I'm looking for all of these ones, when I find a one that's attached to this one, so a part of that river, I just throw it into the set and say, hey, this has been used. I've used that before. Then we reach the end of this. You know, I've just kind of even told you verbally how I would go about solving this. And we have an array that's storing all the lengths of our rivers. Boom. So we'd have five, six, whatever it is. We can return that. And we've successfully complete, completed the problem. So I've taken this problem. It might not have seemed that complex and I've just broken it down into the steps that I need to take. And now I have kind of a, a rough idea of what I want to do. And I'll take this and translate it into code in whatever languages that I'm going to use. So that is kind of my idea of doing this. The process I followed again was define the problem. Make sure I really understand, make some observations, some things that I might notice about the problem, things that, you know, I'm going to have to consider for my solution. And then what do I do? I make sure I know all the definitions. So I know what a river is. I think about any edge cases. I've drawn a diagram and thought of some examples that might break my current understanding. Once I really make sure I understand it, I start breaking it down into really small steps that I can easily follow and try to come up with some kind of algorithm. Maybe my first version of the algorithm is not correct. I reach something that doesn't make sense to me. So I go back and I modify it a little bit and I change the steps around. Now, at the end of this problem, I've thought of these steps. They make sense to me. And what I'll do is I'll take these steps and I'll translate them into code. Notice that I didn't really talk about any coding stuff here. There wasn't anything with depth first search, breadth first search. I was just discussing in my mind how I would go about solving this problem, the steps that would need to be taken if I was just doing this as a human for one example. Then I take that and I can convert that into an algorithm that I can apply for any example. Of course, there's a lot more things you need to do than just this, but I wanted to walk you through how I mentally break down and think about a problem. And hopefully this gives you an idea of what you can start doing when you see a problem that you don't immediately know how to solve. Don't necessarily just think about the coding aspect. Think about logically what you need to do, the steps that need to be accomplished, and then solve them one at a time. I think we can all agree that these six steps are easier to solve than just reading that problem at the beginning um, like it is, right? So again, this video is really designed to just help give you an idea of how you go about solving problems, the thought process that's involved. And if you do really want to practice this kind of stuff, I would highly recommend Algo Expert, which again is the platform I took this question directly from and that I use to prepare for my coding interviews. So I think with that, I'm going to wrap up the video here. I know this was long, but I really did want to try my best to give you guys all the knowledge I could in this area. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed like the video. If you did subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one.